once in a while we discover something absolutely incredible in our own solar system. And today is that day. Hello wonderful person, today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very unusual and somewhat mysterious object that the scientists believe to be possibly a dwarf planet coming all the way from the Oort cloud with an average orbit of about 4 million years. And it was just detected on the approach to the inner solar system. And in approximately 10 years from now, its closest approach is going to take it all the way to the orbit of Saturn. But because of the sheer size of this object, it makes it the largest comet in the inner solar system in the last few hundreds of years. Although it's not really clear if it's going to be easily visible like some of the other comets we've recently seen. What is however clear is that this is an object coming from really really far away in the outer regions of the solar system and might create an excellent opportunity for us to study some of these objects from the Oort cloud. The cloud that goes way way beyond the Kuiper's belt and beyond the orbit of Pluto and essentially represents the outer edges of the solar system, something that's ridiculously far away, to some extent representing the gravitational limit where our sun can still sort of hold on to some of these objects, and anything past that is technically interstellar space. But first of all, how exactly was this found? Well, it turns out that the images of this object were originally taken back in 2014, but they weren't really seen and analyzed until relatively recently. All of this was part of the Dark Energy Survey, also known as DES, that's already been able to produce a lot of really interesting discoveries. But I guess this new discovery was really unexpected. Now originally all of this was reported right here in the Minor Planet Center, and it was actually a report of an unusual object detected in the Dark Energy Survey data. A report that I later read on this Minor Planet mailing list, where a citizen astronomer by the name of Sam Dean was quick enough to explain exactly what the scientists discovered. And by analyzing the trajectory of this object, the scientists have already worked out exactly where it's going to pass in the solar system and how long it's going to take to reach the farthest part of its orbit, with the closest approach that's going to be just past the orbit of Saturn taking place sometime in 2031. And by the way, it took this object about 3 million years to reach this point, which of course means that it spent most of its time far far away from the center of the solar system and also very likely has never really been exposed to much sunlight, which also is already quite evident because it became a comet even far away from the sun itself. It's currently at a distance of about 22 astronomical units um, away from the sun, which is already closer than Neptune, but even here it's already started to exhibit a little bit of a cometary tail, which is of course one of the reasons why it was uh, discovered by the scientists. And in the last 7 years since the first images uh, taken in 2014, it already managed to travel 7 astronomical units. And since it already developed this cometary tail at these distances, it implies that it contains a lot of extreme volatiles. Kind of similar to this other comet that came from a really far away distance, and was analyzed approximately 2 years ago back in 2019. This one here contained a lot of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, which emitted a really large tail really far away from the solar system. And this of course implies that this is, once again, what's known as very pristine material. Material that has been untouched by pretty much anything for possibly billions of years and very likely represents some of the most natural and most scientifically curious types of ices that have ever been seen so close to the sun. Although unfortunately, currently the scientists believe that even when it comes really close to the sun, it's not going to create an extremely bright tail unlike some of the other comets. It's going to be visible using uh, scientific instruments, but not really as easily visible using some of the telescopes you might have lying around at home. Although we don't really know and chances are it might still change its luminosity in approximately 10 years. But what makes this object particularly interesting now is not really the fact that it's a comet or that it's going to pass really close to Saturn. What makes it interesting is its orbit and of course the fact that it's so big. It's possibly about 300 kilometers in diameter and that makes it almost a dwarf planet, possibly even a dwarf planet depending on what it contains on the inside. As a matter of fact, it has a very high chance of being somewhat spherical, which of course would make it a dwarf planet by definition. But in this case, it's a very unique dwarf planet. It's coming from really far away reaches of space. It also seems to be really dark. It's only about 1 to possibly 8% reflective, which is somewhat dark for these objects. With the surface maybe resembling something similar to what we see on Pluto, the darker patches here, that do contain a lot of tholins and a lot of other compounds that sort of make it really dark. 
But the other intriguing part about this object is of course how eccentric the orbit is. It's like 99.99% eccentric, meaning that there was always a chance some star could have stolen this object from the solar system, or there is maybe a chance that our sun stole this object from some other star system that passed close to us. So in other words, there's a lot of opportunity for us to do some really good science here, assuming that a mission to this object happens in the next few years. And the thing is, after 2031, it's going to once again go all the way to the farthest reaches of the solar system, and specifically at a distance of about 50,000 astronomical units away from the sun. And it might technically never really come back from there. We know that in the next few million years, another star is going to come really close to the sun, and it might dislodge this object from its current orbit, thus sending it to interstellar space. But the outbound orbit is assumed to be roughly around 4.5 million years, meaning that if it ever comes back to the inner solar system, it's going to be in the next 4.5 million years from now. And so we definitely cannot miss this opportunity, and I think uh, NASA or some other agencies need to start planning a mission here soon. Currently, it's not even known what sort of an object this is. Technically, it's a comet, it could be a dwarf planet, but it could be a completely new type of an object as well. As a matter of fact, some of the scientists have compared this to one of the previous comets from about 300 years ago, from 1729. The comet of 1729 was allegedly the largest object, the largest cometary object that ever approached the solar system. It might have been one of the brightest, if not the brightest comets ever seen. Apparently it had like six tails and was also on an extremely eccentric orbit and possibly has completely left the solar system by now as well. And because of this, comets like this are extremely interesting both for science and also for general public. These events are extremely rare. Although in terms of the size of objects in the inner solar system, it's obviously not the largest object that experiences the comet reactivity. There are a few other objects like the centaurs of Jupiter and this one specifically known as Chiron that do this once in a while as well. Chiron is about 212 kilometers in diameter, and once in a while it starts being a comet as well. If I zoom out of here, you'll see that it does have a cometary tail right now as well. But Chiron has been in the inner solar system for an extremely long time. And though NASA obviously hopes to study it one day, it's maybe not as interesting as C2014 UN271, the object that doesn't really have a cool name just yet. But there's actually another important reason to try to possibly launch a mission here and to try to study this in more detail. This is in regards to a recent study that analyzed and tried to recreate the Oort cloud by using a variety of different simulations. And what the scientists discovered here is that, for the most part, the objects in the Oort cloud seem to have at least three different origins. The first obvious origin is what you see right here. They got kicked out as they interacted with various planets such as Jupiter and Saturn, in the beginning of the solar system. Others were probably just the leftovers of the original protoplanetary disk from which the solar system was made approximately four and a half billion years ago. But the third origin of these objects is what makes them so exciting. A lot of them very likely came from other star systems, which means that they were captured by our sun as it passed close to some of the other stars in the past. And this is probably especially true of the objects that are really far away from the sun in the beginning including possibly this object as well. There is a slight chance that it possibly came from another star system and is either much older or much younger and thus could contain completely different components on the inside and present a super interesting opportunity for us to study these objects. Now obviously the chance that this is an interstellar object is pretty slim, but it's still there. And the fact that it's a large object and it's already emitting a lot of materials means that this is a pristine object that has not really experienced a lot of starlight before. Although unfortunately, because of the distances involved, and also because this would be a pretty expensive mission, chances of it actually happening right now are pretty slim. Unless the scientists start planning this mission and are somehow able to launch it in the next couple of years, it's going to be extremely difficult to catch up with this comet, or this possible dwarf planet, or this interstellar visitor, whatever you want to call it. We're not going to know what it is for a few months at least. Either way, this is definitely one of the most exciting discoveries of the recent times and it's probably going to create a lot of excitement and a lot of new studies in the next few months as well. Although personally, I'm really hoping for an actual mission because this would be a once in a lifetime opportunity. But I guess until we learn more or until some new updates, 
that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out some of the other studies and some of the other videos in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.